Hello everyone and now welcome to game 3 in this series. We are all tied up at one game apiece. So there will, be, there will be at least a game 4 which I will cast tomorrow. If you guys don't follow me live, make sure to just look for the next Heart of the Swarm number. And it is all there for your viewing convenience. Now on the bottom right hand side of the map we do have Polt spawning as the blue Terran player. Meanwhile on the top left we have Tasia spawning as the red Terran. Terran versus Terran in this matchup. Really looking forward to it as things are now getting underway. So what are we going to see from these players? So far, both of their builds have been very, very similar to each other um, in execution or in, or in strategy, but not necessarily in terms of execution. The previous game, though, it was pretty much a true mirror match, except where the Widow Mine was positioned. The Widow Mine being positioned inside the Mineral Line really caught um, Polt off guard. And that's a really, really smart move. If you don't know, the Widow Mines themselves only deal a maximum of 40 splash damage. That means that any SCV that is caught in the blast radius, as long as it's only one Widow Mine, will not die. That's one of the reasons why Widow Mines are just that effective against stopping any sort of Banshee play. Perhaps if Polt had researched Cloak just a moment sooner, he would have been able to come out with the victory instead, as we're now looking at Polt going for a, a barracks, but not opting to go for a refinery. Um, this does come as a bit of a surprise to me. Oh, there it is. It is now going to be a 15 refinery. So Polt, actually the one um, using the build that Tasia used in game one. And Tasia using the build that Polt used in game one. So we do have a little bit of a swap there. As we are now looking at uh, SCV doing a little bit of wandering around here. SCV going to be coming up the ramp. Not going to be able to sneak on by. As you can see, that supply depot is in the way. Not allowing for that SCV to get in. All right, Polt doing exactly what Tasia did in the first game, wanting to see what unit will be popping out of there, knows that it is a Marine, and now booking it out of there rather quickly. Meanwhile, one Marine up on the high ground here, and are we gonna see this SCV try and sneak by? There is the attack, and oh, SCV decides to back away there, as two Marines are now up on the high ground, and we are going into a reactor. Meanwhile, a factory instead coming in from play from Tasia, and we'll see, yes, he is going for that second refinery, which does normally mean cloaked banshees. Cloaked Banshees, the follow-up play here. Meanwhile, the Command Center already coming into play as well for Polt. And I believe this is an exact opposite of what we saw in Game 1, where the strategies are actually flipped. Will Polt be able to fend off uh, the attack? Is he just going to lose a handful of Marines? Or will he be able to defend against that cloaked banshee you can see that no it is a reactor instead of a uh, tech lab the tech lab should be coming in sometime soon maybe in the next 25 seconds there we go and if perhaps he double trains up marines and then goes into widow mines the widow mine may actually be a, a better deterrent for for banshees you can see that the banshees may try to fly in from a number of angles though and by the time it gets to on the far side of the field Cloak may already be researched, so that is going to be a little bit of a detractor there as we are going to see a bit of a swap. Are we going to double train Widow Mines? It looks like it's a possibility. I don't know for certain as we are now just trying to get more and more gas. All right, it is going to be one Widow Mine, double training Widow Mines again. And is Polk going to have enough to shoot down that Banshee? That is the key question as that Banshee is now just now being trained. All right, the follow-up play. Uh, are we going to perhaps see an engineering bay for detection? We can see the second orbital command is already being upgraded. And this is where Polta needs to be um, needs to be a little bit conservative on those mules. He needs to make sure... Oh, where is that widow mine going? It is going to go ahead and head right there. Make sure to catch anything if it tries to come straight by. Another right here. There's the a scanner sweep just outside of sight range. So this entire center portion has been revealed. And now the Banshee thinks to himself, you know what? I'm, I'm pretty good. I can fly almost anywhere I need to fly and I won't get hit by Widow Mines. But what is being trained? A second, widow, a second pair of Widow Mines now coming in. 
All right, Cloak does need about another 20 seconds or so. We are going into a missile turret as well. And is it going to be enough? Oh, that Banshee could accidentally be flying straight into a trap. Oh, is it a trap? It's a trap. It's a trap. Oh, barely dodges that right there. Some sort of spider sense knowing. Oh, but SCV quickly gets taken down as the Viking is now in position. All right, Viking. Oh, there's the cancellation there as that SCV does get taken down. That one cloaked Banshee so far has two kills, but has not paid for itself as of yet. There is the... Scanner sweep and down it goes. Second Banshee now underway and is Tasia putting a lot of resources into a lost cause? Um, that is the question here. Also, Polt should not be positioning this Widow Mine here right next to that missile turret. It should perhaps be moved down into this location here. I believe that is a much, much better option. And I think I will be right. Oh, no. Is Tasia going to actually try and fly right by on accident? There it is. And... Oh my goodness, right here would have been the perfect spot for it. Flying a little bit too, or that Widow Mine just a little bit too close to the... Oh, there's that Widow Mine hit. So now that Widow Mine... Uh, are we going to see a scanner sweep? There it is. And there goes another Banshee. But those scanner sweeps are not free. We are seeing that 34 Harvesters compared to 28. And each of those scanner sweeps is or has resulted in the death of a banshee but let's take a look at the total losses 225 versus 550 and two scanner sweeps all right let's take a look widow mine is right at the front door oh there is a widow mine oh where did that widow mine go it is right there now is it gonna try to burrow itself in time um nope it is not gonna burrow itself in time it tries to and fails absolutely horribly scv is now once again getting destroyed marines uh, unloading onto that one Banshee. That Banshee, however, still right there going after some units. There goes another SCV as the pressure is just not letting up at all. Polt is right there hoping to get some shots off onto that um, Banshee. The Banshee pilot doing a great job some, with some fancy flying. And all of this uh, Viking needs to do is just make sure to not let the cloaking, um, the, the Banshee out of its sight. And yes, it looks like it will get taken down right there. Not before it takes down another SCV, though. There they go. All right. Total losses. 525 versus 800. As Tasia now has um, taken the... Excuse me. Has taken the supply advantage in terms of workers and also overall army. We are neck and neck, though. 31 to 32. 39 to 42. Very even at this point. As we're now looking to move on into the middle stages of this game. So far, Polt is moving out with a Viking here, perhaps hoping to intercept a Banshee on the way in. Marine um, doing a little bit of scouting, activating the Nago Towers. And Tasia just has such good map awareness right now. All right, the Banshee trying to fly in here realizes that, oh, there's a whole bunch of units and decides to back away. That one Marine healed enough as the Banshee is still flying around on the far side. Oh, may have accidentally... How does it know that there is a Widow Mine there? That is some clutch clutch flying as we're now looking at this banshee looking to fly in all right there you have it tasia flying in gets off a couple quick shots and then moves away this banshee right here um just still hovering in position um not exactly sure the physics on that but supposedly it does work and i don't know how does it work in space anyways let's go ahead and move back here tasia um, coming back around, there are a whole bunch of Marines um, perhaps trying to shoot down these rocks off over here. You can see that there are um, Banshees off to the side here as the Marines trying to get underneath it. Yes, does take it down rather quickly. There it goes, stimming a whole bunch of Marines to shoot down and take out that Banshee there. So Medevac healing up the rest of the units and getting them back up to full. All right, at this point, Teja still looking to perhaps finally take up his third base that may not work out well though there is a widow mine right there to try and intercept it will at least force a scanner sweep there and if the marines are not careful if they actually walk into the the site there that would be extremely extremely bad is the widow mine gonna get off a hit oh it looks like it might get off a hit right there and there it goes um damage being dealt only a handful of marines I'm um, taking a lot of damage there. No will true kill at all. 
If there was two Widowed Mines, perhaps the splash damage would have been enough. 40 splash damage only um, across all of those units with, I believe, 125 or 120 um, or 100 towards that main, main target. Now, um, these players must have a lot of practice against each other as their builds are still extremely similar. Even the location on their uh, on their watchtowers is very, very um, do marry each other, mirror each other tremendously. You can, I believe, this is actually a little bit too, yeah, a little bit too um, high up, a little bit lower, and you'll still get coverage across the bottom of the map and figure out if there are any drops coming in. So big, big coverage there. No real way of any drops trying to slip in at all as we're looking at Marines and Medivacs looking to clear up three bases. Both sides are really, really looking strong here. Oh, the Marines, they're gonna get target practice here in just a moment. There you go, one Marine down, another Marine down. Zelnaga Tower has been taken down as the Medivacs do a bit of flying around the far side. However, two Marines at this Zelnaga Tower will quickly spot what's happening right there. And those Marines, as upgraded as they are, do not stand a chance. Mordina is just falling out of the sky. There they go. Oh, beautiful, beautiful flank here. Are the Marines going to perhaps catch a good position? Siege tanks are off over here. They are, none of them are in siege mode. Scanner sweep, is it going to come in in time? And then are they going to just try to push through just in time here? You can see that the siege tanks, does Teja know what's going on? No, he doesn't know what's going on. There's a scanner sweep up on the high ground. Teja quickly sieges up his siege tanks. And there you go. Uh, Pulse quickly sieges up his own as well. Are we going to get into a siege tank war? Yes, we are. And there is one medevac right there. Oh, who's going to come out on top? There's the blast. Both sides losing some um, siege tanks there. But Teja with the superior number. And a little bit of delay in Pulse reaction was all that it took. All right, medevacs now trying to pick up the rest of these units here. Marines, not going to be enough to pick up all of them. Handful of them are going to be left behind and taken down. Meanwhile, oh, Siege Shanks up on the high ground. Medevac. Uh, medevac maximum energy here. And are we going to see perhaps another engagement come in soon? So far, Marines still wandering around. The map, you can see that the armory is up, so we should be getting into level 2 weapons upgrades in just a second. Already getting level 2 Fortasia on the other side, as we now see a big push here. A whole bunch of Marines just absolutely splattered. I'm not sure what exactly was thought by Polt in trying to charge up a ramp with that many Marines. I didn't expect him to move out, and that was a tremendous, tremendous loss as he is now just only, I believe, what, 25 supply ahead of his opponent, with many of that being in Marines that he's currently training. Now, on the far side, he could try and poke down this here. Oh, there's Marines. No Marines nearby to help clean up and pull it with a Marine siege tank composition, which is just a bit too Marine heavy and not enough siege tanks, is losing to Teja's very, very heavy army compos or heavy siege tank composition. There you go, a whole bunch of Marines now trying to do target practice on the back door. Siege tank is ready to go, ready to blast away, and is it gonna do anything? There you have it. One siege tank could try and get some damage and shots off there. There goes a siege tank. There goes a, oh, why are they going after that building? Are they just outside of sight range? It does appear so, as we're now looking at one lone Marine trying to shoot down a command center before it upgrades to an orbital command or a planetary fortress. Good luck with that. Um, yeah, not going to happen. That poor, poor Marine should just be using Stim constantly as it gets taken down there. All right, a new reinforcement of Marines and Medivacs coming in across the map. You can see that there's a whole bunch there, and there is a huge hit across and dealing us so much damage only one widow mine though not two as these siege tanks now need to back away there's the engagement the medevacs were too far and Polt perhaps was counting on that in that fight all right marines are in position you can see siege tanks and marines doing a little bit of a battling back and forth there is the line drawn in the sand it is right here meanwhile yeah, this giant area in the middle is a giant no-man's land. No one wants to be in there. 
and you can see why as they're just doing Venn diagrams. Meanwhile, on the high ground here, oh, there's the engagement. Siege tanks now trying to push through. Medivacs, oh, and it looks like Polk just ran into a meat grinder, losing a lot more units again. Uh, Polt has had the supply advantage throughout this game, but he has not been able to capitalize it, uh, capitalize on it at all. Um, okay, well, are we going to see another Venn diagram across the center? Oh, siege tanks! Polt playing, not paying enough attention there, losing some more units again. As the Marines are now trying to fight back against a handful of Marines that are left and siege tanks that are left. That is going to be a very strong push here. And Tasia with the defenders' advantage, meaning that his res his units are reinforcing slightly faster. That may be the difference between victory and defeat here. Um, you can see a large group of siege tanks and marines by Polt. If these were actually involved in the fight um, or in the past fights, those fights could have gone differently. All right. Straight down the middle, there is a, a small narrow walkway where there are no center towers, but... Um, really not going to be able to do anything about that there. There is another attack. Widowmine did get a strong hit. It looks like no, no hits there as the siege tanks are once again blasting away. But 179 supply versus 145. The Marines are trying to reinforce and there is still damage being had. The siege tanks trying to rush on in, take down that siege tank. It doesn't look like it's going to work at all as more siege tanks come in from the far side. Oh, that Widowmine could go for another easy detonation. What is it going to hit though? Um, there's a handful of units. There goes another siege tank there. A beautiful, beautiful shot. And a scanner sweep um, still not revealing anything as we're now going to try to perhaps flank across the other side here. All right, siege tanks are all in position. Um, are they all going to siege up and try to hold this center portion of the map? They are going to get hit by another Widow Mine Blast if they are not careful. And if they are not careful, well, they're pretty much going to be dead. All right, here you go. There is going to be another shot here. Are we going to go after Marines or what are we going to go after? There is another hit. All those Marines. Oh, another unit I thought was lost there. Nope. Nope, no unit lost there. Double Marines. Double Marines off over here as well. Siege tanks, Marines trying to hide behind the, the brush here. We'll be able to do exactly that. Marines in a firefight. However, more Marines showing back up. This Del Naga Tower will be once again under the control of Polt. And there are so many circles on this map. It is like a giant Venn diagram of where you do not want to be standing. All right, Marines, Medivacs, all right here. Meanwhile, coming back across the center, that sensor tower revealing so much information and what you can do. You know what they should have it where like overlapping sensor towers have detection. That would be cool. Like really heavy, like a Venn diagram and um, have a reason for overlapping sensor towers, but then that might make it a bit too strong for Terran being able to have that much detection in any sort of the game. All right, let's come back around. Marines still going to get cleaned up here. You can see that there is a planetary fortress on the top right. That is still mining both sides on four bases now, but with four bases for both players, more Marines trying to walk up here and clean up. That is not going to work as... Oh, is that command center going to get shot down? It looks no. It is just taking a bit of damage, but not going to be doing much. Over here on the center 12 o'clock location, it looks like all the Marines getting absolutely destroyed here. One siege tank goes down, but not enough to finish off another. As more Marines... Oh, they're going to go ahead and take down one sensor tower. There goes one, and there is a pretty big opening here as long as they don't try to charge in against all those siege tanks. Oh, it is going to engage against all those siege tanks. They should have perhaps tried to engage against here instead. Just run along the backside, go after SCVs, go after the economy. No siege tanks whatsoever, and that would have been much, much more effective. All right, Medivacs now pulling back once more. Siege tanks in position. Um, is it spotted? Tasia, no, does not know about the siege tanks here. And oh, they unseige just at the wrong time. That would have been a huge, huge fight as the siege tanks now get up on the high ground. There they go. They're going to siege up, and now they're going to regroup as... Holt looking to, no, not engage there. He does not want to fight there. All right, Orbital Command. Uh, command Center quickly taken down. Handful of Marines. I'm going to clean up the rest here and stop an expansion from coming into play. Siege tanks now pretty much walking straight up against the center. There is one planetary fortress. A giant stop sign for any Marine army push. As we're now looking at the siege tanks getting into position to try and blast back. 
there you have it however this planetary fortress and oh there is a strong push now siege tanks are ready to go it is going to be losing one shot there but there it goes finishing off the rest of them here and wow Tasia really pushing out a little bit too far across the map here but one siege tank down to 16 hit points and still able to survive marines now looking to perhaps clean up this planetary fortress scvs should perhaps be on auto repair um are they going to start repairing this here if they do this uh, planetary fortress has a chance at surviving since it does have the uh terran building armor but no no repairing whatsoever and i believe that's the third time i've seen pole to lose a planetary fortress without repairing as with scvs marines dropping straight from the sky onto all of these siege tanks gonna go ahead and clean up and it looks like Polt is finally coming out ahead here perhaps his attention was diverted elsewhere earlier and to a much more necessary part of the map marines now looking to clean up all of these siege tanks yes it looks like all of them will get taken down there they go a new command center or orbital command could get lifted off into that position and then perhaps turning into a planetary fortress so far marines and siege tanks coming back in a oh, 20 supply advantage not very much if you think about it all of those units are now looking to back away you can still see a handful of marines at this um, 10 o'clock position more marines now making their way over that is enough marines to clear this out as long as there is medevac support which there is all right there you go there's the marines now trying to engage simply too many numbers three three marines against three three both sides upgraded to destroy each other in a matter of seconds all right let's take a look here uh oh siege tanks marines this could be a very bad battle siege tanks are all in position there and that is a very good flank here the siege tanks however on the low ground um not really able to support all of their the rest of their marines that is a whole bunch of medevacs here are these siege tanks going to be able to do anything at all as they're now trying to get up onto the high ground and get in position okay there you go you can see another round of siege tanks oh there's some scanner sweeps coming in again and Polt is not paying attention. 3-0 upgrades on those siege tanks compared to 3-1. And there goes another siege tank there. More Marines getting cleaned up once more. Polt sitting at a 20 supply advantage still. And perhaps is going to intercept some of these siege tanks are on the wrong side. No, running straight through. And oh, losing so much. That is um, losing a lot of those Marines much more than he had bargained for. Didn't expect there to be that many and I believe Polt just walked into that trap and whatever advantage he had, he just gave it away. T uh, Tasia leaving some of those siege tanks alive or keeping those siege tanks alive and leaving them siege in the right position thinking that, Ta or thinking that Polt would just perhaps push in at the wrong and uh, inopportune moment. That's exactly what happened there as the siege tanks are now blasting away. You can see Medivacs picking up those units and oh what was that another siege tank blast going back and forth as Polt comes out slightly ahead here marine now preventing this command center from landing all right medevac now trying to pull back here you can see tasia still sitting on a slightly smaller army but he has a lot of gas but he doesn't have nearly as many minerals to try to train up more units this base over here on the top right has been mining pretty efficiently for quite some time you can see that there are mules mining away as well and that is going to have uh, oh what is that another marine going to get taken down yes it does two marines right there and we're going to have a very strong push come in here okay planetary fortress in position what is going to be happening planetary fortress off over here marines now trying to make their way in there's a whole bunch of mules there scvs could repair are they going to repair in time again no they are not and oh there they go there goes the massive repairs and with that five armor you can really see how strong a planetary fortress is meanwhile tasia just um taking a beating here by polt as polt walks in with a whole bunch of siege tanks rolls on in and should be able to destroy this positioning here this one planetary fortress gonna get shell shocked but it is keeping the rest of the army um, at bay and also Polt it can now perhaps clean up some even more production buildings anytime you start hitting the production of units that does start to have a very very nasty effect siege tank now gonna get taken down more marines going after the rest of those here and it looks like Polt is going to take game three in this best of five 
and this is just looking out very this is still looking very strong as um tasia trying to clean up the outskirts of the board but he's already down by about 80 supply not gonna be able to do much of it uh, you can see a large number of medevacs only 22 marines and all, most of those marines are now back somewhere else that needs to get regrouped and regathered all right there you go scb is hiding here they're gonna get taken down siege tanks in the position here making sure that they're not gonna get flanked at all finishing off the last of the supply depots and then Polt will try and perhaps clean up some of the other locations marines now just walking straight up into here going straight after the siege tanks not caring about any of the other targets all the scvs now trying to come over to repair they get taken down as the marines finish up everything we now have double the supply for Polt, and it looks like Polt will take a commanding two to one lead in this series as now all of these barracks will get destroyed here tasia now down to um or, or still sitting on about 4,000 resources but nothing to really be able to spend his money at all and money in the bank in starcraft 2 does not earn interest you actually start ending up losing money um as the marines are constantly constantly firing they don't have to pay for ammo they just pick up rocks off the ground and i don't know somehow be able to shoot a is, can a gauss rifle do that or a um yeah anyways coming back around you can see mules are in play here i believe it is just going to be a matter of time before Teja does give the gg whole bunch of barracks in position here trying to get use every ounce of real estate that it has there is a handful of marines here but all those marines going to get taken down there it goes the rest of the marines now pushing forward there's the planetary fortress getting off one easy shot scv is trying to repair not enough as the marines at full upgrades and only a handful of scv is not able to clean that up at all and there is the gg tasia losing game three giving pult two to one thanks for watching thanks for listening hope you guys enjoyed game three